hand in hand. I left October's chilly breath on my doorstep as I entered into the warmth of my house. Inhaling deeply, I fully expected the mouth-watering scent of my mother's chicken noodle soup to fill my nose and my soul. To my surprise, the air was lacking the enticing aroma which always accompanied the hours before my family's weekly Shabbat dinners. Mom, I called, are you here? The quiet clicking of patent leather shoes against worn wooden planks signaled to me that she was home. I patiently waited for her petite figure to appear in the doorframe. Rachel, she cried, her voice choked up. My Shana Madela, I was worried. My eyes locked with hers, deep and full of compassion, the same eyes that watched me take my first steps. Gazing into them, I anticipated familiarity. Instead, I was met with foreign eyes. They were anxious. My mother's constantly serene present was su presence was suddenly broken, replaced by a woman I did not know. I watched as a wavering line of tears began to rise to her pupils and, slowly, spill onto her cheeks. My voice laden with concern, I asked the question that would change my life. What's wrong? During the next 30 minutes, my mom explained that the Nazis had obtained a list of congregants belonging to our synagogue. She continued, interrupting herself every few seconds, to release a cathartic sob that they were going door by door to round up the Jews. The more she talked, the more thoughts swirled around in my head like a storm. My anger and confusion paramounted. I was aware of the Nuremberg laws and how they limited the rights of my people. I knew the stigma and prejudice that were associated with the dirty Jews. My ignorance and naivety had led me to believe that the nadir of Jewish history had already been reached. And yet, the unthinkable had occurred. Could the Germans really take us out of our homes? Stripping us of humanity's most fundamental claim? A pit formed in my stomach. Sensing my restlessness, my mom took my hand in hers. Though my hand was slightly bigger, I took comfort in my mom's protective nature. With a look of understanding, she kissed my forehead. I know how hard this must be for you, and I'm sorry. If I could fix this, I would. To feel like the ground is crumbling under your feet is a terrifying thing. In these darkest of times, remember the words of our people. Ko haolam kulo, gesher tsar meod. The whole world is a very narrow bridge. The important thing is not to be afraid. Mom, I said, my voice trembling with fear. What should we do? Have trust in Hashem. He will lead you on the right path. I had enough money saved up to buy you a, ticket train, to buy you a train ticket to Copenhagen. You will be safe there. What about you? What will you do? As long as you will be safe, nothing else matters. Here, she said, pressing a ticket into my right hand and a small bag into my left. My lips pressed together, prepared to argue. As I opened my mouth to speak, a single shot rang out, shocking me into submission. My mom's face drained of color. You must go. Now. Heeding my mother's orders, I ran out the back door and into the wooded area behind my house. Off in the distance, a clanging noise reverberates as a bullet leaves the mu as the as a bullet leaves the muzzle of a gun. One shot, then two. My heartbeat mirrored the pace of my footsteps, fast and frantic. As I dashed through the shrubbery, a thorn snagged my cheek and like a child, like an eager child clamping his teeth down on a long-awaited meal, the thistle refused to let go without a fight. Yanking myself free from the tree's steadfast clutch, a river of blood began to gush onto my hand. In an effort, in an effort to remedy my crap, in an effort to remedy my quagmire, I tore a piece off. I tore off a piece of my white linen dress and began to clot the wound. The throbbing pain fully consumed my concentration until, unexpectedly, a voice broke the silence. Are you all right? Standing before me is a young woman. 
Automatically, I notice her blonde hair and blue eyes. Clearly, she is of the superior Aryan race. My breath goes shallow as my eyes lock with hers. A look of concern spreads across the girl's face as she asks, Why don't you come back to my house with me? And then quickly adds, I can sanitize your wound for you. I, I can't, I stuttered. Why not, she counters. I look down, my last, dis- my last ditch effort in concealing my true identity. I can feel her look me up and down. Her gaze burns. My thick curly hair and crooked nose are a dead giveaway. I am a Jew. Empathetically, she pleads. Empathetically, she pleads. Come with me, please. I know what you are running from. I know the risk I'm taking. Trust me. Come with me, please. She extends her hand. A simple gesture, but it reveals her magnanimous nature. I allow the wound to lick her fingers through mine. The leaves crunch underfoot as we run in unity through the forest. A vast brick mansion comes into view. The woman lives on the wealthy side of of Krakow, far away from the impoverished Jewish ghetto. As we near the house, my pulse slows. The woman pants heavily. This is it. Once again, a shot shatters through the calm melodies of nature. My pulse jumps back up to a rapid pace. Squeezing my hand tighter and pulling me inside, the the girl whispers, We must hurry. We speed over gorgeous marble tiles, sharply veering right as she ushers me into a storage space under a grand staircase. I bury myself under thick woolen blankets and anxiously wait for my fate to reveal itself. Once more... I can't help but recite the prayers of my childhood. Untana Tonkef, a prayer recited on the yearly day of, jud- of judgment, is simultaneously awesome and terrifying. The prayer reminds people that it, is, that it is Rosh Hashanah, the day when one's destiny is sealed in the book of life. Its words strike fear into the hearts of all. Mi yiyeh u mi yamut, who will live and who will die. Today, These words resonate with me on a level I hope they never would. Without warning, three forceful knocks on the door are followed by a polite and feminine, Hello, officer. How can I help you today? Quipply, he responds. We are under orders from the Third Reich to transport any Jews to Dachau. My heart sinks. I had heard rumors of people going there. No one has ever come back. Before the panic truly had time to permeate through my body, the woman soothed my nerves by answering in a calming, calm and collected manner. No, sir. There is a pregnant pause. I know the officer is meticulously examining her, using her physical features to classify her into a certain race. Very well, then, he says. Have a nice day. You too, she calls after him. A wave of relief crashes over me. Trembling, I thank God for his love, feeling blessed. I can't help but feel grateful for the fact he placed my mom and this stranger into my life. Before this day, I took any act of love and kindness for granted. But now I know it was their sympathy that saved.